I'm Salad Lord, and I saw Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It is directed by James Gunn and starring Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, and Kurt Russell. And a bunch of other people too, because there's a lot of characters in this movie. This movie starts off yet the gang, the gang, the five people, right? They're commissioned to stop this really cool alien beast from destroying these batteries, these really rare batteries. And during the opening sequence, you just see Baby Groot dancing along, dancing, he's dancing, right? To the music while everybody else is trying to fight this big old monster. And I like seeing that because every time the music gets turned off or something, uh, like there's this point where Drax, is his name? Yeah, Drax, he crashes into this music box while they're fighting. And Groot just starts hitting him, gets super pissed. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is so great. Groot's like a child. I love it. It's like, why did you get, why did you turn off the music source? I don't like this. I don't like you. Anyway, that's pretty great. So they defeat this monster, right? And the people who they are being commissioned by, I love this part so much. They're being told by these other guys, hey, these people are actually pretty sensitive. These are the most sensitive creatures on earth. Super sensitive, they're going to get super offended, so chill out, okay? It's all women. So the crew's in front of these uh, powerful women, these golden women. They're very golden, and I like their gold. However, man, Raccoon is such an a-hole, okay? He's just like, y'all are just D-bags, and I don't like it. Y'all are just so rude and mean, and it's just hilarious. They get offended by this, they're like, what? And they pretty quickly skirt along, eh. But it's also review, view, eh. But it's also revealed that Rocket stole these batteries. These very precious batteries that they're supposed to protect. So when they're flying off planet, they're like, oh yeah, I did it. We made so many monies. We have so many monies in form of batteries. Wow, we're gonna be so rich. And then the fleet comes, the fleet of all women come. And I just love how their ships are. There's no actual people in the ships. It's just like ships being controlled remotely. And I like that idea. It's like, oh, this actually kind of makes sense. You don't want to send just random people out in the vacuum of space, especially if you're like super civilized, super in like, especially not when you're super evolved like these women are. You don't want to send those women into battlefield. So, you know, they do have to flee into this asteroid field. Rocket and Quill are arguing the entire time. Who is the bestest pilot there is. And they're having this member measuring contest, right? And it results in the ship being hit by a bunch of asteroids. And they eventually have to crash into this planet to get away from all these people. But first, before they crash into the planet, they're in danger. The entire swarm just went around their asteroid field and it's like, oh wow, suspense, whatever shall happen. Oh no, are they going to die? No, because the movie is still going. There's still two hours of runtime left. There's something that destroys all of those ships though. This really nice milky egg kind of shape looks like a Pokemon, like spaceship. It destroys all of these ships. They land right in front of all of these people, all of the team, in this planet that they crashed into with all the trees and I just love the scene when they're crashing into the trees you got Drax is hanging behind he's having fun and then you also got Gamora she's hanging on to the ship trying to hang on to Drax and Gamora obviously is like that was horrible I don't like this again I don't want to ever do this ever again and Drax is like ha ha I love it! Let's do that again! I'm like, I love your attitude, Drax. Even though you're like, 
a, a killer, violent guy who just wants to fight all the time? You're pretty cool. You have a positive outlook on life. I would hang out with you. You got Raccoon and Groot and I forget who else for staying behind to repair the ship. Then, uh-oh, these guys, right? These guys that are very familiar to Quill. The, the guy who actually raised Quill in the last movie is now here to take them. Uh-oh, you got a bounty on your head and you stole the batteries. Therefore, you are going to have a million dollar a piece on your brain, okay? You get these ravagers, these commissioned ravagers. Then you got another group, and that's the group that Quill is familiar with. And they're all fighting. Well, it's super tense. Rocket's kind of like in between everything. All these two sides are like, hey, you, you guy, Yondu, I think his name is. Yondu, you are banished, okay? You're not allowed to make money by getting this guy and going with us. You're not allowed. It's, it's fun. It's not like a fight goes on, but you also see whenever Raccoon is... His name's not Raccoon, it's Rocket. Whenever you see Rocket just kind of jumping in between the trees and I'm like, I love it. It's so great. Of course he would be able to jump between the trees. He's small and agile and he basically has these hands that are good for gripping trees and goodness and stuff. But he gets caught and then he gets captured. Uh oh. And now we go back to Ego. Ego is like, hey, Quill, I'm your dad, and I'm a celestial, which means I'm a god. And I'm just like, okay, guy, you seem a little bit shady, what's your deal? Because pretty immediately from the start, I'm like, I don't trust this Ego guy whatsoever. And it's confirmed when he is like, hey, Quill, uh, here's some power, harness your power, learn to make a ball. So Quill makes a ball, now starts playing catch with his dad, which in the last movie he mentioned is the only thing that he really wants to do with his dad. He really just misses playing catch. Now what's even more great is that you get Rocket and Yondu are pairing up together to escape this enclosed mis jail, whatever they're in. They're trying to escape it. It's a ship. They're trying to escape the ship. They do it successfully. They have Groot kind of crawl throughout the entire ship trying to get these people not to wake up while he kind of walks around them. And he gets different items different times, so many different times, and he gets it wrong so many times. It's like, hey, I got this little creature. Is this what you want? I got a little uh, t t t desk. I got a desk. And it's like, it's supposed to be small, but Groot eventually finds it, not before having everyone alerted to what's going on. Pretty much these guards walk in on Rocket and Yondu just kind of installing the headpiece back. And then Yondu with his arrow just murders everyone. It's great. And Rocket helps too. It's so pretty just seeing the little red line is going across the screen. And I'm just thinking to myself, hmm, this is a Marvel movie, right? I know this is like child friendly or whatever. Child friendly. You just gotta think about the reality that all of those people are dead. And the audience is supposed to not care about that. That is great, because those are bad guys, therefore, their lives don't matter. So they narrowly escape these people, and they go to Ego's planet with the knowledge that, hey, Ego might not be a very good guy. And turns out that's right, because Ego is talking to Quill about oh, all these plans. You're supposed to have some purpose when you're immortal. So here's my purpose. I'm going to have all of these eggs. I'm going to plant these eggs into Earth. And it takes two Celestials to activate these eggs, to terraform all these planets, and make them me. Ego's just waiting for this one Celestial, another Celestial. So he's been going around to other planets, impregnating all these women, 
trying to get a celestial. Whenever they don't have celestials, then he kills them. Murder, death, kill, which is bad. Bang, bang. The perfect offspring is Quill. Quill is part celestial and makes his data proud. And he's like, you should come with me. You're immortal. You're going to like all of this. And in the midst of telling him his plan, he slips up that, hey, I put a tumor in your mama's head. And of course, Quill's like, that's bad. I'm going to shoot you a bunch. So he shoots him a bunch. And it reveals this core, which is like nice blue electricity core. And I'm like, oh, he's really not human. And he transforms into David Hasselhoff before transforming into himself again. And it's just like, oh, wow, this guy is a bad guy. He just wants to manipulate and take all the power and use Quill to have all that power. So when Quill is like, hey, no, I'm not going to actually team up with you. Ego's like, hey, actually, you are by giving me your power. So he steals the power. He pills him with this blue electricity thing. And it looks weird. And he's kind of just like, I'm just kind of being power sucked. But this causes all these eggs to kind of try to take over the world, especially one on Earth. You get to see one on Earth. It devours this Dairy Queen. Nice product placement, by the way. It's devastating because I like Dairy Queen. Well, why? What did Dairy Queen have to do with any of this? This is a personal slight against Dairy Queen. Come on, man, with the McFlurries, uh, especially the salted caramel truffle. I hope they have that back. They had it back. They had it for one season that I remember back in high school, and I was like, "Yum! This is my favorite Dairy Queen treat." And Mala is gone. It makes me sad. Actually, let me change my position. I am glad that Dairy Queen gets devoured because they have not brought back the salted caramel truffle, okay? I want that back, please. It's my favorite Dairy Queen dessert, and if it was back, I would eat it all the time, and I'd get super fat. So now Quill and Peter are fighting. Uh-oh, no, that's not very good. But, you know, it's fun. They get into the ship, the very magical ship. They shoot down try to go down to the core. Rocket creates this bomb using the batteries that he stole and he gives it to Groot to place in the center, the very core of the core, like the brain. And it's very protected and only Groot can weasel his way into the core and place it on the core and press the right buttons in the right order. And while Rocket is instructing him, Hey, don't press this very far right button. It's instant death mode. Instead, hit these levers and then this button next to that. And each time, Groot is like, oh, is it this far right, far right button? And it's like, at this point, Groot must be messing with Rocket. He can't be that dumb because when push comes to shove, when he does activate the core, he does it right. And I'm like, ah. So you knew exactly how to do this. You just... Groot, you're adorable. Man, I didn't mention the best character. The the chick with those antennae, I forget her name, but she can feel whenever she touches someone. And I'm like, ah, I love it. Her primary purpose is also to put her master to sleep. So this is very helpful during the final battle when she's just like, I'm gonna put him to sleep. And then she gets knocked out and then he wakens again. But luckily, they had enough time to leave. Uh-oh. Also, Yondu sacrifices himself to save Peter Quill. And that's pretty nice. Escaping the planet after the ship has been yeeted off into space. And he's only been given one jetpack by a rocket. And they float up into space. Yondu puts his shield on him. And Yondu is just cold. He gets frozen. Frozen in space. It takes a long time for him to get frozen in space. But still, it's a nice, warm, touching moment. Especially when you consider that this is ice cold space. 
and I really just like it. And then the movie ends with now they're here and they're kind of chilling out doing things and stuff and being the guardians of the galaxy. And that was the end of the movie. This movie's graphics I really liked. I especially like all the pretty colors. Man, Ego's Planet is beautiful. I would love to be on Ego's Planet right now, here, but instead I'm kind of floating in space, so maybe I'll encounter it, but I think it's already been blown up. It's just sad, but still. I definitely would want to check out a place like Ego's Planet. I think this movie is very similar to the first one, but it's different in its own way. I liked how this movie covers the whole Peter's dad, right? He's been mentioned last movie, so now he's mentioned in this movie, and that's good. However, this movie I don't think is as good as the first one. Just because it just seems like it's another Guardians of the Galaxy, but a little bit like less quippy and more serious. But overall, it's still a pretty good movie. I gotta give this movie a solid 7.5 out of 10. And if you liked that review, I have more content on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Presents. Basically, you get an ASC weekly. I haven't been doing any of the daily vlogs because I've kind of been busy with other projects, but I will return to ASC Daily once I have more time to do things and edit and such. However, if you want me to review a certain movie, go to our $20 tier where you can ask me to do some line work or review a movie that you want me to review. And until next time, I'm in South Saw. I'll see y'all later, my bow. And until next time on Mint Salad Saw, I'll see y'all later, my salad croutons and bacon bits.